Namaste. Thank you so much for joining. Good morning. This is a Dharma yoga practice. It's all levels, but there are modification. There are mo there are uh, variations for those who are more advanced and would like to try them. So um, it's targeted more to um, um, those variations are definitely targeted more towards intermediate to advanced. But there is options as well for modification. So please do according to your condition, and um, and respect your limitations. On that note, let's begin. So just sit tall and supreme, close the eyes, and bring the attention inward. Nothing to do, nothing to seek. Everything we need is already within. Let's begin with the sound of Om three times to attract divine attention. Imagine you are everywhere.
all beings everywhere be happy and free from suffering and enjoy this practice through our senses. May we always have a strong desire for the knowledge that liberates us from pain and suffering. And may we cherish no ill feelings against each other, only peace, love, joy, and compassion. Om Shanti Shanti Shanti. So now, let's do the mantra for purification to purify the space, the ground, and all the psychic channels within. If you don't know it, just pretend you're singing it perfectly through the voice of the Guru and you derive the benefits as though you're chanting it perfectly. Those who know it, try doing a single breath and do it loud enough so it can be heard by the subtle bodies within and all around us. Three times. Om Pavitraha Pavitrava Sava Vashtanga Toki Vaya Hasmaditpandrikaksham Sabaya Bihantrahas Chihi Om Pavitraha Pavitrava Sava Vashtanga Toki Vaya Hasmaditpandrikaksham Sabaya Bihantrahas Chihi Om Pavitraha Pavitrava Sava Vashtanga Toki Vaya Hasmarit Pandrikaksham Sabaya Bihantrahas Jihi So let's do the three mantras. Imagine the chakras that were going up along, that, that were uh, the, all the chakras are situated along the central psychic channel, the Shishumna Nadi, which is coincident with the spinal column. Imagine that you're opening up those gates, and in order to, um, in, when those gates are open, the energy can pass through more easily. So we're opening them one by one, and so when the energy is ready to be released, it will fly up easily. It is said that when it reaches the crown chakra, that is when the divine bliss can be triggered. But in order for that energy to rise from the, at the first, in the first place, we have to be in strict observance to the ethical rules, yama and niyama. So we have to keep on cultivating those that observance. Let's start at the base of the spine. The color is red, so with each chakra, imagine that whole area is being flooded by this uh, color that I'm telling you. And just we, we chant the same mantra, seven tones uh, to the same mantra. Starting at the base of spine, Muladhara, color red. Lam 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 lam. Repeat. Lam 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 lam. Repeat. Now it's the same type of melody all throughout the second chakra. Svahistana, located at the sacral area. Vam, oh, the color's orange. Vam, 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 vam. Together. Vam, 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 vam. Go ahead. Next, the navel chakra. Color yellow. That's Manipura. Ram, 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 ram. Repeat. Ram, 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 ram. Next, go to the heart. The color is green anahata. Yum, 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 yum. Yum, 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 yum. Next, the throat chakra. Vishuddha, the color is blue. Hum, 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 hum. Repeat. Hum, 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 hum. Next, the third eye, Anya, the color is indigo. 
Sahasrara, it's a crown. The color is violet. Just one long sustained om. Allow the sound to kick, to ride on a breath. Inhale. Imagine trying to make the sound reach the ends of the universe. Again, inhale. Ah. Let's take a moment to just try to keep on hearing those sounds in your mind. Imagine those sounds are still doing their work of opening up. Now let's chant the sound SUM, S-U-M, at the crown. With the vibrations produced by the M part of the sound, the humming sound, and by pressing the lips together, those vibrations, imagine them shaking the whole brain, you should feel the whole top of the head vibrating. This helps to produce mental sharpness and clarity. With the mental sharpness and clarity, we gain more ability to find the discernment to know what's true, what's not true, and to reflect upon the knowledge that's been giving us, given us. In particular, the important knowledge is the knowledge of the true self, the nature of our true self, which is infinite, immutable, and um, absolute boundlessness, potential to, 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 to grow and to evolve. So this is akin to the nature of God. There's no one without the other, there's no separation, no you, no me, just God. So let's just keep that in mind now, and then we'll do that sound some. Take a deep breath in, concentrate at the crown. Some. vibrations again lingering there to continue to do their work to sharpen the mind. And now we will do the practice, imitating the forms which are all divine manifestations of God. And like experiences, some of them may be more difficult, more challenging, some of them may not be what you might feel is pleasant, but be grateful for each and every experience. Be grateful and be reverent of each and every form. They all serve to teach us something. And with the knowledge, knowledge is the anecdote to the ignorance. And the ignorance is what causes, lands us in a place of suffering and pain over and over again. So let's come to standing with that intention of cultivating the mind, cultivating the, the radiant health of the body, mind, And of course, more importantly, make the practice an offering to all beings. May all beings benefit from this practice. Just the camera. Okay. So, let's.
let's begin with some warm-ups here. Starting off by circling, uh, allow the arms to hit the body as you go from side to side. Feels all their heavy weights. Try to see all the way around you. Good, then slow it down, bring your hands on the hips, circle the head, make large circles as possible. Even when the head goes back, try to see if you can see the floor behind you and all the way around you. And then change the directional rotation. The ears come into the shoulders, the chin to the chest, back of the head to the top of the back. And now from here, left foot can come forward a little bit right arm circles. Make as though you're winding up to throw a ball. Go forward now. Feel so you're holding a weight of five pounds in your hand to make the arm swing more easily. And then the other foot in front, left arm circles. If you're having any ish, shoulder issues, you can support your right hand across the front of the chest can turn the body in the same direction as the arm. And go forward now. And then release. Bring your feet in the same line now, about 10 inches apart. Arms up over the head, take hold of the opposite elbows, bend to your left. Bounce a few times, try to get a little bit deep with each bounce. Come up, go to the other side. Look past the left elbow, try not to hunch the back forward. Come to the other side. And then go to the other side again. Pulling the elbow, try to get it. You'll feel that stretch all the way through the left side of the body. Then come up and go around in circles. Mostly the head, neck, and shoulders moving at first. The pelvis, the waist more or less. Unmoving. Unmove, but then add the chest and upper back into the movement, starting to feel the stretch in the waist. And if you feel com comfortable to do so, the whole torso circles. Chase large circles in front of the body like a windmill. And then come all the way back up. And then circle in the opposite direction again, starting small. Head, neck, and shoulders to begin. Gradually adding in a little bit more movement by bringing the chest and the upper back into the movement. And finally, if you feel comfortable, do so. Maybe the whole torso hinges at the hips. You make those large circles, the forearms brushing across the feet and then coming all the way back up. Release, shake up the wrists. Try to feel all the joints in the fingers and the wrists moving, being shaken. You have to move the joints every day as Dharmaji says. Up and down, otherwise you might end up in big trouble. Keep on moving. Now bring your arms up to the side and swing the right leg back and forth. Feel free to bring the left hand on the ball if you like for balance. Try to get the knee right to the shoulder, lean forward as the leg comes up. Roll the leg back if you're trying to kick yourself in the head from behind. And then the other side, left leg goes up and back, back and forth like a big pendulum that went out of control. Stand with your feet together, arms by the sides of the body. Inhale, rise up. Two, three, lift up off the heels. Bring your hands up high over the head. Exhale, two, three, and down. Slowly roll the heels. Inhale, rise up. 
three, come up higher. One, two, three. Exhale, two, three. And down with the heels, two, three. Inhale again, two, three. Rise up, two, three. Push and lift your toes, engage your leg muscles in the core. Exhale, two, three. And down, two, three. One more time. Feel the arms folding up by themselves. And push into reach your toes. Come all the way up. Exhale, two, three. Down, two, three. Bring the head back down. Let the head down, the eyes downcast. Making a gesture of humility. Stay in that mindset of humbleness throughout the practice. Renounce all the fruits. Dedicate this practice to all beings everywhere. Imagine this as your divine duty to all beings. So now let's, with that attention, bring the hands that come to the front of the mat, bring the hands to the front of the heart. Surya Namaskar. Thank the word Sam Salutation. Salutation to the light and the warmth of God. Infuse yourself with it and send it out to all beings through your own practice. Raise your arms up over the head, arch back. Fold forward, bend your knees if you need to, to bring your hands flat on the ground. The right foot back, lower down the knee, drop down to the seat. Come into the high plank. Lower down the knee, bring the seat all the way back. Glide forward between your arms, brush the nose to the ground. Pick up the chest, bring the head all the way back. Again, bring the seat back. Come forward again. Brush the nose to the ground. Slide forward gracefully like a snake creeping through the grass. One more time. Remember, try to imitate the form. Copy the teacher. In each case, each form is your teacher on all levels. Adho Mukha Savanasana. And then the right foot steps forward to the hands. Drop down to the seat. If that's too much, if that's too difficult, and lower the knee down. You can use the right hand to bring the foot forward. And then the feet together, Uttanasana, chest on the thighs, head down. Come right up to standing, arch back to see fit. And then return, hold hands to the heart. Raise your arms again, stretch the whole front of the body. Fold the body forward. In on the left foot now, bring it back first into the plank. Lower the knees down, the seat all the way back. Glide forward. Bless to those who can imitate the forms. Physically, be, re uh, be have, imagine a balanced range of motion like the serpent. Take the seats back, glide forward again. Be regal and wise like the serpent. Always bless those who can imitate the form mentally. And, and all the way back. One more time, glide forward. Three times bless those who can imitate the form. Copy the teacher spiritually. Tap into all the divine qualities. And then lift the seats all the way up and back. Allow the head to come down towards the ground. Left foot forward, feet together. Spiritual knowledge can only be imparted psychically, so just try to keep on finding the connection of each and every form. Um, uh, back to Pranamasana. Bring the arms up over the head again. Stretch the whole front of the body. Approach your true nature, which is absolutely boundless in its potential. Uttanasana. Right foot back. Lower down the knee. Sink down to the seat. Come into the high plank. The knees down, the seats all the way back. This time as you come forward, the hips come to your hands, push into your hands, and the toes lift the hips and knees away from the ground, no legs on the ground, upward facing dog. Back into Adho Mukha Savanasana, downward facing dog. Then our right foot steps forward to the hands. Feet come together, Uttanasana, pull the body against the legs, head down. Come back to stand, reach up and back. And back. Go up and back again. Fold forward. Right in half. Head down. Adjust your humility. Left foot back. Into plank. Every movement expressing, expresses devotion, love, and surrender. Lift the hips away from the ground again. Upward facing dog. Into downward facing dog. Left foot steps forward to the hands. Feet come together, bow to the legs. Come right to standing, reach up, engage the buttons in your upper back to support your movement, hands back to the heart. Go up and back again. Be 
Jesus. So you know the scars are really going where you want the body to work all the joints. Right foot back, keep the back knee lifted this time, keep the back leg charged. Feet to the plank. Now here, if you can, you can bring your seat tight back and see if you can make your way into upward facing dog right from here. Pull the elbows into the side of the body, push them into your toes. You have to squeeze the elbows against the body, come into upward facing dog. If it's too much, you lower the knees again like we did, and then make your way up with your hips between your hands. Stay here for a moment. Bend the toes under. Pulse. Try to get your shoulders back. The nose up. Look like a dog howling at the moon. Try not to make any folds in the lower back or the back of the neck. Telescope your neck out of the shoulders. Out of the telescope your neck out of the shoulders and your trunk out of your hips. Now push into your hands. Lift the seat. And down we go into down facing dog. So here, bounce again. Try to get your chest closer to the ground. Look like a dog stretching its back. Those of you who are flexible, you might be able to get your forehead, your nose, some of you might even be able to get your chin down. Without bending your arms, if possible. Good. And now from here, the right foot steps forward to the hands, back leg stays charged. Push up to the back heel. And then pull it right forward. Uttanasana. Belly on your thighs, head down. Come right to standing, swing your arms up and back behind the head. Hands back to the heart. Raise your arms up again. Just be the witness watching everything, watching the body moving all by itself. Fold the body in half. Left foot back. Back leg stays charged and the knee up. Come into high plank. Again, bring the seats back. Be mindful of your shoulders, of course. So if you're doing this version where you're trying to make your way without touching your hips to the ground, your knees to the ground, know your limitations. Into upward facing dog. Back into downward facing dog three times. So round your back, tuck your chin in. And when you're riding down facing dog, sink the heart. Now knee be coming forward. Push your heart right between your shoulder blades. And then right up to the center of your chest. Push your shoulders back. Widen the heart to come back. Widen your chest back the other way. Round your back into downward facing dog. Melt the area between your shoulder uh, between your shoulders and then come forward again. Round your back. Chest forward and back the other way. Tuck your chin in, round your back, make your way to downward facing dog. Now take the shape of the dog again, loyal to its master with its head down. Embrace that beautiful quality of the dog. It's already within you too. Just have to turn it on. And then from here, whoops, left foot forward, back knee lifted, back leg strong. And feet together, Uttanasana, pull the body against the legs. Come right to stand and reach up overhead. Come back home, hands to the heart. Raise your arms up. This time, swing your arms back, bend your knees, land your belly on your thighs. Arms come right over your shoulders and in front of your head, maybe, if you're more flexible. The chest right again, right on the knees. The forehead maybe make its way towards your shins if your legs are perfectly straight. Now from here, look forward, hold the breath, keep the weight on the left leg, bring the right foot back. Kapiyasana, bring your arms up over the head, stretch from the toes all the way to the fingertips. Then break the pose, bring the hands down. Step back into the high plank, lower down again the knees or the seat all the way back. Make your way into cobra or upward facing dog. Back into Adamukha Sadhanasana, downward facing dog. Now sweep the right leg up, Ekapada Adho Mukha Savanasana. Step the foot between the hands, back knee down, or curl the toes, right into Kapiyasana again. Pull the arms out of the shoulder, the arms out of the shoulders, further and further. Stretch. And then from here, land your body in your thighs. Swing your hands back, possibly without touching your feet to the ground. The left foot comes in to meet the right. Uttanasana. Body against the legs, head down. Come right to standing, swing your arms up over the head, arch back, hands back to the heart. Bury your mind deep in the heart, watch the body moving with more grace, more ease, more power. And again, hinge at the hips, belly on your thighs, join your hands together and send them over your head, maybe even in front of the head, Uttanasana. Try to get the top of the head to come very close to the feet, the face to the shins. And then from here, Hold your breath and weight on the right leg still. Left leg goes back right into Kapiyasana again. 
pull the arms all the way back as far as you can, stretching the toes all the way to the fingertips. And then come back down with the hands, step back into high plank, and then bring the seats all the way back behind the heel. Come forward again, drop your knees if you need to to the ground first, and then come into upward or cobra, upward facing dog or cobra. Right into downward facing dog. Left leg comes up, and step the foot between the hands. All transition seamless, like you're doing the divine dance of devotion. Raise your arms up over the head and back. Do your best, whatever you're doing, don't worry about the results. Swing your arms behind the back, Join them together and bring the right foot into meet the left. Uttanasana, bow to the legs. Every part your divine gift to all beings. Reach up and back. And then come back home, hands to the heart. One more variation. Bring the arms up, lift the hearts in every sense. And then come down, land your belly on your thighs, join the hands behind the back, and pull your seats directly over the heels if you can. If you have, uh, try to straighten your legs as much as possible. Look forward, the weight on your left leg, right foot back, right into Kapyasana, pull your arms all the way back, stretch, fingertips eventually maybe come over the back toes, and then bring the hands back down. From here, swing the left leg all the way up if you can into Ekapada Adamukha Sukhanasana modification, just come back into high plank. Come forward, your legs still up, shoulders over the fingertips. Again, squeeze the elbows into the sides of the body, and then push up through that right heel as you lower your chest down first. If you need to, you lower your knees at the same time as the chest is coming down. If you're into cobra or upward facing dog, roll over your toes, tuck your chin in, back into Adho Mukha Sivanasana. Immediately, the right leg comes up and step the foot between the hands. Move the shoulders, all the fingertips so the foot doesn't land the big heavy thump. No jerks, no loud movements, no aggressive movements. Raise your arms up over the everything graceful and soft. And then lower the belly onto your thighs, join your hands behind the back, left foot meets, uh, meets the right, Uttanasana. The practice is a beautiful balance between the strength, the drive and effort with softness and surrender and grace. Pull this, arms up and back. Hands back to the heart. One more, same way, raise your arms up, left side this time. Hinge at the hips, bend your knees, landing your belly on your thighs, and push your body into your legs, your legs straight and seat over the heel of the hands, over your head, or maybe in the front. Hold your breath, and right, um, the body on the right side, and left foot goes back. Into Kapyasana, pull your arms all the way back. And then break the pose, bring your hands down, bend the toes under the left foot, and swing the right leg all the way up if you can, into Ekapada, or come into plank. Come into high plank with your leg raised. If your leg's raised, keep it raised. Pull the elbows into the side body, push the heels, your palms, the finger pads, lower the chest down. Right through into cobra or upward facing dog. Roll the toes back into Adho Mukha Sakanasana. Left leg comes up. No breaks in the movement. Take the knee uh, into the chest and bring the foot between the hands. Back knee down, flatten up the toes. Arms up, use the arms to telescope the body further down the hips. And then from here, lean into your front thigh again. The arms come behind the back. Right foot comes in to meet the left. Uttanasana, face to the shins. If your legs are perfectly straight, your chest may be going below the knees. And come right up to standing, reach up over the head. Arch back. And then come back home. Hands at the heart, landing in Pranamasana. From the solar plexus, your source of inner power, in her doubt, inhale that power up to the crown. Hold it there, send it out to all beings everywhere, so all beings, especially those who are feeling weak, who need the empowerment, can use it. Exhale back down to the solar plexus, remain a stop in your own source. Keep feeding the crown feeding all beings to your own qualities. Now, return, and now we're gonna do some balance poses. Standing on your left foot first. Let's start off with ballet pose. Take hold of the heel from the inside with the right foot, and bring the leg out, bring the left arm up at the same time. 
if you are uh, flexible, your leg comes close to the shoulder, or maybe you try to bring your, you try to line up your toes with your fingertips. So it might look more like a T. If you're having trouble straightening your leg, you can hold underneath the knee. If you're having trouble bouncing, stand against the wall. Stay completely unattached to the results. Just do your best. If you're more flexible, you can bring the right foot up higher. You might be able to take some of you with your, push the right heel up with your right arm and take your foot with your left hand. Right beside the shoulder, those you can do splits, you might be able to do this one. Arm up to the side. from here. Bring a right heel in towards the body and then you can either do a tree with your foot against the inseam of the leg, those of you have a lotus, knee close to the shoulder and bring the foot right into the top of the left leg. You can hold on the foot with your left hand and take the right hand behind the back to hold the elbow or lean for a little bit. You can use your left hand to guide your hand to the foot. And come with your left hand in front of the heart. If you're doing the bound one, bound Padma Vrachasana, um, or you can have both hands over the head, or even just one. Set your sights high in every way. Have strong, good intentions of offering. Now from here, we're gonna do something a little bit different. Bend your knee, take your left hand down. Those who have the bind can keep the bind if you like. Walk your hand forward and then come down into squat. If you don't have your foot in lotus, bring your foot out across your thigh and you can stay in this pose here or you can take your hands to the ground and try to eventually push your seat all the way up and back so you come into sort of like an Uttanasana. Those of you who have a lotus, you can keep the left hand beside your foot. Maybe you can bring it onto your, right, your left ankle index finger just along the outside of the heel. And from here, lift your chest a little bit. And then from here, walk your hands forward. So if you want to go further, you can take your foot out of the lotus, hook the foot around the outside of the shoulder. The other arm is just pressing against just in front of the um, uh, against the knee, you can see if you can lift, or do this so you can see if you can lift your left foot up off the ground. So the foot's, again, you're, you're like holding a newspaper underneath your arm. And you can extend your leg, those you know, flying, flying crow. Pass down what she says, not important. Just do your best and go to the position you can. And release. So try it on the other side now. Press down through the right foot. Take your left heel by the inside if you can. And start in ballet pose. Your arms like a T or bring the arm up a little bit high, arm the foot up a little bit higher like the letter Y. Lift the chest. Do again whatever modifications you need, hold underneath the knee, stand against the wall, it's all perfect if you're coming with a sense of intention. If you're more flexible, again, you can take the foot with your left, the left foot, push it up, left, push your left heel up. And take the foot with your right hand. Push it against the back of the shoulder, against the knee. And then take your arm out to the side. Now from here, fold the leg into your tree position, either with your foot like so, and bring your arms up, stand tall. If you have this position, really push with the heel, the base of the toes and the toe pads to stay upright. Otherwise, you can do your lotus, your half lotus. Good, now from here, if you're in tree, you fold, take release the foot, fold, bring it across um, the leg on the thigh, come down halfway, you can even sit here, or if you can, take your hands to the ground, and see if you can push the seat further up and back, pull your body against the leg, 
if you had the lotus, your hand maybe still be binding the foot. The right hand can come beside your foot, maybe you can come right onto the ankle. Hold your breath and bring your hand to the ankle, the index finger along the outside of the right heel. Gaze just on your toes. Anchor down to the inside edge of the foot. Then from here, you can bring your hands down. Bend your left, right knee again. And if your foot's in lotus, take it out of the lotus. So you can hook your foot around the, uh, the top, almost close to the shoulder, very close to the shoulder. And the other, um, the left knee, your, the left arm is pressing just underneath the knee. Lean forward, hold your breath, press into your hands so you can take the right foot up off the ground. And maybe the right leg can extend out as well, if you know that variation. variation. the right foot and come back up. Release. Okay, come to the back end of the mat. If you can, you join your hands behind your back. Squeeze the heels of your palms together. If this is too much for balancing, you can take your arms up to the side. Balance and T-pose to start. Take your left foot forward, hinge at the hips, bend your left knee, and then make your way into the pose by bringing the right leg up. So your body level with the ground like you're lying on the table or it resembles the letter T. Those of you who want can come up down a little bit lower the chest, bend your left knee if you like, bring your chest on your thigh, pull your hands over your shoulders, keep your head forward, the right leg comes up higher, higher than the head. The head's height of the height of the knee, your foot may be able to get higher than the neck. Again, if you can also do like an airplane with your arms up to the side. Now drop the left hand down to the ground, turn to the right, Adha Chandrasana, pull the right leg up higher, open up. If you look up, you won't be able to see your foot if the leg's in the right position. If you need to, you lower your left knee down, you can do it right from your knee. So again, you do the position that's suitable for your abilities. Okay. Now one more here, just an extension of what we did before, bring the right hand back, left hand to the foot again, pull the butt against the leg. If you need to, you bend your left knee so your belly can land on the side, the right leg comes up straight up, standing split. If you can, you bring the right foot, the right hand into the, towards the foot and maybe even on the foot, the index finger on the inside of the heel. Bring the right foot down, lift the head, exhale, slump like a right dog, relax, and coming up. Good. Now, try it on the other side. Starting off with balancing T, join your hands together, squeeze the heels of your palms together if you can, or take your arms up to the side, level with the shoulders, right foot comes forward. Bend your right knee into your warrior, uh, your balancing T pose. You can always bring your fingertips down to the ground as well as you're making your way into the pose. Just try to get your leg level with the head. It's often the leg goes higher than we think it does. Try to keep it about the level of the hip. Feel free to stay here if you want to go forward. Uh, go a little bit deeper. You bring your body down, your head close above the height of the knee, your belly on your thigh, and you pull your hands over the head, arch the back a little bit, try to get your left foot up high as you can. Your arms can be separated like an airplane diving. And then from here, release the hands, the right fingertips come down at least. 14 or 16 inches away from the right, um, the right foot. Stay with your hand tented. This is pressing into your fingertips. Five points of strong pressure through your fingertips. Try not to bring your lift your palm. Don't let the palm collapse. Bring the left foot up higher. Open up to the right. 
chest right against your thigh. The, the chest is pretty much on the knee. Lift the left foot up as high as you can. If you have tight hamstrings, you can bend your knee, of course, as you need to. And try to get, eventually, your foot right over your, your raised foot right over your right foot. Hold your breath so you can move your left hand onto your ankle. It takes patience, determination. right over the heel. And then break the pose. Bring the left foot down. Take the head forward. Exhale, slump down. Relax. Let that make your way back up. Standing in the middle of the mat. Facing along into the mat. Bring your, your fingers together at the, at the height of the shoulders. In line with the elbows. Jump or walk your feet apart. Going to your left. Turn to your left. Sit down to the seat. Be strong and mighty like a warrior. When you look at Sri Dharmamitra doing the pose, his back knee is very close to the ground. He's coming forward a little bit. And when we swing the arm down, we miss slow. You'll be able to touch the fingers to the ground. Again, according to your condition. Just, but keep working your hips. Keep trying to make progress every time you practice. Shoulders down, be steady and strong. Become the warrior. Now bring your right arm up to meet the left, and beat up with the last one. one. Turn your chest all the way forward. If that's difficult to turn your hip, you can lower the back, lift the back heel. You can even lower your knee to the ground if you need to. Take the head back, express more um, humbleness, devotion. Lower the back knee down, flatten up the toes. Kapyasana. Rock your shoulders back and forth. Push your chest up and away from the seat so you don't get a big crunching, crunching sensation through the lower back. No big fold across the back body. Those of you flexible, you might be able to bring your foot up towards the head. You can bring your fingertips down if you need to. I find it helps to bring my thumb into the knee uh, just to get uh, push into the back of the knee, other hand strictly on the other side of the knee. Take your head back, fold the leg, imagine holding the sock behind your knee, and then maybe the foot will come to the head. You can hold the foot with both hands if you like. Keep your seat all the way forward. Eventually you can bring your arms up. Once again, according to your abilities, your practice, your seat has to be very low so you stay steady. Right against your front heel. And then break the pose. Bring the hands down. Move the left foot out to the edge of the mat. Slide the right toes back a little bit more. The more you lengthen, the more you come closer to the ground. And then if you hit the joint low to the ground, you can fall to your right. See if you can come onto the forearm. Fall to your left. And then have both sides of the seat, uh, hips anchored down. Keep on telescoping your body forward. If you're very flexible, your chest is almost on or on the ground, you can bring the, foot, the hands to the outside. Keep your knee close to the shoulder. Be like a lizard. Just sun wakes up on a warm earth, emerge at the form. Be one with a lizard. If you're not quite there, your hips are still high from the ground, so just stay on the hands, but imagine your hips are sagging heavily like big water bags, sink or sandbags. Sink them towards the ground, unless the body will eventually follow. You have to keep on sliding your toes back. Your left knee stays over the heel. Make sure it's not falling out to the side or um, falling out of alignment with the knee in general, with the foot in general. And now coming back up, push the hip back. Lift the toes up on the front foot. The hip is over the back. The hips are over the back knee. Bow to the leg. Anahanamanasana. Your chest, try to get beyond the knee. Your cheek lifting inside of the shin. Keep 
keeps your attention at the base of the spine. Keep visualizing the spine going longer and longer. This may be where you are finding your edge. If you want, you can try to push the left heel forward now. Come back into sort of a lunge position, your hips all the way forward, but move your hands back alongside your seat. Straight line from the back knee to the front knee. And then imagine you're trying to stretch the mat between your, with your feet. Bounce a little bit. Do this again. Mind you, don't go too fast or aggressively. Don't let it. Don't go to a place that brings you misgiving, of pain, of suffering, and anxiety. This is not what you want to transmit. If you're all the way down, you can take any variation you know. You can take your hands and arms and put your front of your chest over the head. Or you can turn to your left. Lots of different things you can do. And you can do this approximately this, even if you're not in the full pose. You can see you lean forward, those of you who are very flexible can bring your body down on the inside of the leg. your hands alongside the hips, lean forward, and drag the left heel back in. Good, now come upright, bend the toes under the back foot, bring your hands on the hips, see if you can lift the left foot up easily. If it comes up with a lot of resistance, just move your foot in. You should be able to lift your, if your foot's in the right position, then you can lift your foot up relatively easily. The legs should look like a box, pat your feet to posture, come out softly this way, see it from this angle. Right arm up, angle the toe of the knee towards the right, so now the arm has to sit on the inside of the knee. Left hand pushes in your right, if you like a fist, sometimes helps to drive a little bit more force into your right hand, so you can bring your belly up higher than the thigh, and then your body can spin more easily. Push the left hip back, so top of the head forward, Try to get the center of the chest behind your thumbs. Your left shoulder over the right, maybe even more. Eventually you can get them at the same height. If you want to take a bind, push your seat back. And use your left hand, if you like, to guide the right arm underneath. You move your seat back to give more space. Your elbow's close to your, the back, the calf of the left leg. Left arm goes over the back. Hold, take the hand out from underneath a little bit more. Then join them together. Last action, hold your breath. See if you can take your knee up off the ground. And then you can spin even more. Turn your chest and head up. Break the pose, bring your hands back. From here, bring your hands back to the inside and come to the base along the edge of the mat again. And then come all the way back up. Arms up to the side, go to the right. Turn around 180 degrees if you need to. Sit down into your seat, back into your warrior two. Strong and steady. Embody all the qualities that, you, that we see in a warrior. They're already again, already within. Swing the left arm up to meet the right. There's a portion of God, a presence in every form. And as God is in every form, so we too are everywhere. We have qualities of every form within. Lower the back knee down, flatten out the toes, kapiasana. The version that you like, if it's too much for your shoulders, tip your arms back like this. You can see to take hold of your, uh, hold of your opposite elbows, allow the head to just sit in your arms and lean back like you're lying at the beach, or if it's too much still, hands on the seat, push the seat down, keep the chest lifted and hands on the knees. So lots of different options you can do here. Pills go the body out of the hips again. Again, if you want, you can more advance. Take your left thumb to your left knee, cup your fingers around the outside of the knee, and see if you can bring your foot up to might guide your foot to your head more easily. Through the process, we learn tricks to get into the poses more easily, more efficiently. Now break the pose. 
toes, make way for the lizard. Moving the right foot to the edge of the mat, actually no, not yet. Push the seat back, lift the toes on the front foot, and see if you can bow down. Actually no, it was right. <laughs> so move the right foot out, this has to go first. So you move the right foot out to the edge of the mat and fall to your left if you can. So you can get your left hip and left form to anchor down and then roll back to the right. Try to get eventually the body lower than the knee. Keep telescoping the chest forward. Make your way further and further down. If your hips are anchored down, eventually the pelvis, the belly, and the chest will come down as well. Just visualize that lizard just sun yourself on the warm earth. Keep your left hip over the back knee, lift the toes up on the front foot, and bow to your leg. So you might be able to get forms to the ground, your chest moving towards and beyond the knee, the top of the head maybe eventually touching the front foot. Take your attention to all the areas where you want to find more release. In this case, probably the back of the leg, the hamstrings. That's where the prana will go. Your attention is like a magnet. It attracts all the prana there. Now, this is again too easy. Lift your chest, hinge your seat forward, bend the toes under your back foot. Make sure your right hip is not moving too far forward. You want to have your hips even. You eventually want to have your fingers on your side of the hips. Use blocks if you need to, underneath your hands, so you can stay more upright. And then you just, again, imagine you're stretching the mat in opposite directions with your using your 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 ball your the foot of the back, the back foot and the heel of the front foot. Push up through the base of the toes. And once you're all the way down, again you can find your way into different forms here. Use your creativity to find a form that brings you to the edge of your potential. If you never try in 20 years you're still gonna be in the same place. Keep on trying. Keep on moving forward in every yourself in the forms. Pause and pass and determination, you might arrive. And then from here, getting ready to come out, bend the toes under, press, lean forward a little, press into your fingertips, and pull the right foot back. The knee, the left knee underneath the left hip, bend the toes under, and again, hands to your hips, so you can lift. Heel directly in line with the back of the knee, left arm up, go to the right, Sukha Padigrita Pashvakanasana to start. Right hand pushes into your left, belly comes higher than the thigh, and then roll the right shoulder all the way back. Try to turn your chest and face all the way up. Take the bind, push your seat back, and then use your right hand to guide the hands underneath. Sometimes a little bit easier you can do it with your leg up your knee up so you have more room still you have lots of clearance but you have to try to keep your balance so you have to hold your breath as you take your knee up and then your left arm pit has to be sitting on the other side of the knee if your arm is too high if you're not directly on your leg your arms on the, not on the leg it's going to be a bit more difficult to find your way into the bind roll the right shoulder back inside here and move back to uh, face the long edge of the mat. So from here. Those of you who are flexible can come with a side split. So be careful again, don't overstretch. Do it mindfully. Those who are very flexible, you might be able to slide your feet all the way up and get your seat closed or maybe on the ground. Here we'll look the eyes inwards. Of course if this is too 
too much, you can also do frog. So in frog, you walk your hands forward underneath your shoulders like doing a wide plank, where you lower your knees down, and then come onto forms and slowly try to bring your seat down. If it's too intense, you bring your feet close together. Your big toes can come together, come into baby pose. So lots again, levels depending on your flexibility. Remember how you're feeling to the extent affecting the one. Don't go to a place of pain and suffering yourself. That's exactly what others will feel through you. So you have to be careful. And remember the divine essence, God is sitting within, so you hurt yourself. Guess who feels it first? So from here, press into your hands, bring one knee closer to the other if you're doing a frog, and then come back. So if you're doing a split, be careful, of course. Before you split, move forward, lift your chest, push and heels your palms, hold your breath, lift your seat, and then walk your feet. Heel toe your feet in until they're a comfortable distance. So a little bit, maybe about two or three widths beyond the edges of the mat, cross Avita Palatanasana. Take hold of the ankles or step on your hands. Take the head forward and then pull the body away between your legs. Cross Avita Palatanasana. Those who are more flexible can bring your head further in. The head may be in line, back of the head in line with the heels. shoulders, the feet in line with the top of the head. You can stay here, this is where you're at. If you want to do headstand or farm balance, you can. You can bring your hands so that the fingers are a little bit behind the heels, tripod. Push into your hands, hold your breath. Those you can straddle right up from there, circle your legs up, go ahead. Other way to enter is to just bring your feet back behind your wrists. The knees just just on the knees, press against your elbows, bend your toes away from the ground, maybe, and then the feet will come up. You can just dance from toe to toe. This is a pretty safe position. All you have to do is put your feet down, but don't move fast. Nice and slow. Now, if you're in headstand, come back down which way it feels appropriate for your ability. If you're straddling down, engage your core more as your feet come close to the ground. Hold your breath so your feet can land right beside your head again, same place they started, as it started. Arms up to the side, come all the way up. Pull your heels in. Easy to cross, now place your hands on the seat. Bend your knees like you're sitting on a horse. Bring them far forward so that the knees are beyond the toes. Allow the head to go back. You can keep your hands on the seat, push into seat, pull down, or walk your hands, slide them one at a time down the backs of the legs. Holy just underneath the knees. Roll the thighs out, which roll the shins in, which your thumbs come a little bit further through the center, and push your leg, your hips forward, and up so your legs straighten more. If you're more flexible, keep going. You can walk your hands down. Eventually, you might be able to step on your fingers with your heels. So you might be able to even come into Urdhva Dhanilasana. If you can see the floor easily, your head's close to the ground, one arm comes over your head and then the other one. Remember, you have to try to be able to get out of this too. So again, be mindful of what your abilities are. So if you're in Urdhva Dhanilasana, you come onto your fingertips, one head comes to the back of the knee, push into the back knee hard. So your knees, your hips come forward, hold your breath, and take your other hands, your, uh, just in the same place on the other leg, walk your hands back, everybody come back up. Tuck your chin as you're coming up, closer up, and then arms up to the thigh, jump your feet together. Standing tall like a mountain, from the base of the spine, at the base of the mountain. Breathe up to the crown, which is like the summit of the mountain. Exhale back down to the base of the mountain. Be stalled and shakable through and through, unmovable in your devotion to the practice. Bring your intention to serve. Good 
Now we're going to come into Vasisthasana. If you want, if you don't have any wrist issues, again, be careful. You can fall in like sometimes Sri Jamalicha does. Otherwise, you can come into table and into your plank. So if you're coming um, from up standing, bring your hands in front, spread your fingers, hold your breath, and then come forward, fall into the pose, plank. And then from here, left hand comes more in front of the nose, to move your head to the right, and keep your ankles crossed if you like. Vasi Sasana. Body straight at first. From the heels all the way to the crown, straight line. Make sure your hips are not sagging down or you're not dropping to your shoulder. Keep your left arm fully extended. Right arm a continuation of the left arm right through the body. And then go to the other side, come back to plank. Right hand comes to the left a little bit. Keep your ankles crossed if you like. Vasi Stasana. You can stack your left foot on top of the right if you like. Make sure your left arm is active so no spaghetti arms. Back to plank. From here, lower your knees down. Sit back on your heels, or um, you can sit between your heels if you like. Depending on your flexibility, don't force your knees. Again, be mindful. Bring your right arm up. Take the elbow with your left hand and push it up higher and further back behind your head. The back of the head is anchoring the right arm in place. You can stay here, push into the back of the heart with your fingertips, or if you have shoulder mobility enough, you can bring your left arm up to meet the right. Push into the back of the heart. Drop your shoulders down. Lean back a little bit. Good. Now from here, come forward. Land your belly on your thighs, or close to your thighs if you can. And see if you can when you tip forward, your elbow might come to the ground, so maybe your head. And if you want, you can push your hip up higher so that you're on the back of the head. If you want to go even further, hold your breath so you can take your knees off the ground. Walk your feet in. Do it slowly again. Don't go too fast or you may fall over your head, so be careful. Again, pushing to reach your toes and come right back up and release. All the movements controlled and graceful. Left arm up now. Take the elbow with the right hand, push it up and send it back behind the head. Anchor in place with the, uh, the back of the head and then take your right arm up if you like to take the bind. Push in the back of the heart, send the hands down, lean back. You might be able to bring your forehead down already. And then just lift your seat and then just move your left elbow forward. And keep moving forward. Try to lift your hips more so that you're more on the maybe moving towards the back of the head. If it's too much, you just um, can move your head forward so that you're on the top of the head as opposed to the back of the head. And then those you like, hold your breath, press into your elbow at the top of the head. Walk your feet closer and closer. Maybe eventually your thighs come right against the body. And it's almost like you're going to fall right onto your back, but just control it so you don't. And from here, walk your feet back as you need to. Push into your elbow. Hold your breath. Bring your, uh, your knees back down, your seat back. Release. Good. Shoulders. Release. So now, one more round of Vasisthasana. This time, if you want, you can try the variations. Or you can do the same thing. So, standing on your left hand and left foot first. Remember, this is always also an option here. Keep your knee on the ground. Make sure your left hand is aligned with your knee. From there, you might be able to eventually get your left knee off the ground. You want to go further, slide your right toes back, spin on your left foot, and then move your left foot in closer. 
Make sure your foot's not turned 90 degrees. It should, the toes should still be in the same line as the rest of the leg. Push your hip forward all the way up as well. As we try to get your hip over your foot. Your left arm is then fully extended. You have the strength. And the left inside edge of the foot is down so you can take your right foot up off the ground and more easily catch the knee. gracefully come back down spin on heel palm spin on the left foot come back to downward facing dog I like to start in downward facing dog because the hips are already hard to start go on the other hand and foot now the right hand moves towards the left spin as you come into uh, the foot the, the foot as you come into Vasi Stasana but keep going slide your left toes back turn the foot so again the toes are not up 45 degrees at the most no more than that, you want to have the inside edge of the foot firmly planted down, your left right arm fully extended. And then from here you have more ability to take your left foot up off the ground more easily. Push hips all the way up, it should feel like Urdhva Dhanilasana. Catch the knee, if you have the ability, take the foot, stretch the leg. Keep your hip high, don't drop into the shoulder. Turn, bring the left foot down, spin on the foot, spin on heel the palm, back into downward facing dog. Lower the knees down and relax. Breathe in, breathe out, all fatigue. Good. Roll your way up. So, before I've done a couple of chant, a couple of times, a vers an inversion through the the Sukhagomukhasana and like in the, uh, before, but if you didn't get a chance to do an um, inversion at that point, you can try one now, and that might still just be hair pose. If you know how to get to headstand, go ahead, go right into it. Uh, lash your forehead in front of your knees and then lift your seat up. Try to get your hips over your knees. Imagine your you should be able to feel when the belly button pressing against the front of the spine, the lower back. Tuck your chin in. If it's too much, again, pressure on the head, the back of the neck, and the head. You just move your head forward. If you want to go a little bit further, you can come into teddy bear again. Fingertips or hands flat on the ground. Make sure they're not beside your head. The heels, the palms are aligned with your knees. Lift your seat. Walk hands very close to your wrists. So your hips are parallel with the shoulders and bring your knees just against the elbows. I find it personally easier to have your fit palms turn towards the body with the fingers equal distance apart. This has me a lot to strength in your fingertips. And then you can just pull your toes away from the ground. Eventually bring your feet up. Maybe you can eventually bring one leg back behind you. Open up your stance a little bit more. Open up your hands so that they're on the edge of the mat if you're doing that one. So you have more chance to get your hip up over your shoulders. If you're closed in, your back tends around and then it's very hard to get your left leg back, especially if you have any, if you're limited in hip flexibility. So open up your stance a little bit. Walk your hands a little bit further forward away from you. Press into your fingertips and then you can the back foot to hang heavily towards you. Those who are more able-bodied, you can come onto your index finger, you can come on one arm if you like, one hand. Eventually, you do have to walk your hands a little bit closer. Hold your breath, keep your feet flexed, your back foot again dangling. Just peel fingers off one at a time, including just on the very tip of the index finger.
understanding this from biblical ends. Master this first and be able to move your legs around uh, um, without losing your balance before you try to take your hand, one hand up off the ground. And then lower back down softly with control into child's pose. Breathe in. Breathe out. Now arms come in front of the body, sliding right into cobra from here. Glide forward between your arms. Take your chest up, your head back. Into Adho Mukha Sivanasana. Now here we make jump forward. Land your feet to where our hands are coming to squat. Let the heels prepare with the hands. Fingers dangling loose. And then lift the heels if you can. Push in to reach your toes. Shoulders over the hips. Lower down very slowly. At the seat, come around your heels. Tuck your chin in. And then roll back into the into even plow. Your seat over your shoulders with your hands back. You can stay here if you like. With your hands on your back and your feet close to the ground, with your knees bent, close to the shoulders if you can, if you want to make the shoulders stand. Join your hands together behind your back so that your elbows come closer together, your arms are right behind your body, you can't see them from in front. And, you, and take your hands to your back, come up one leg at a time. Expression of shoulders stand, you can. If you have lotus, you can move into lotus now. This helps to make the mind more one pointed and increase the benefit, increases the benefit of the pose. Only if you have a full lotus. Otherwise, the legs straight. If you have a lotus, try to push your knees up as high as you can so that it looks more like a shoulder stand as opposed to a plow pose. All the attention just straight between the eyebrows. Attune your mind to God's ever loving, ever compassionate, ever unjudging. Slowly bring your knees down. Come back to plow if you have a pindasana. Uh, if you have a lotus, you can go into pindasana. Bring your lotus against your chest, your knees on the inside of your head, and those of you who can, you can take the full embryo pose. Wrap your arms around the outsides of the legs. Join your hands just underneath the feet. If you don't have a lotus, just come into plow pose. Again, with control. The feet come behind the head. The hip is or over the shoulders, you keep your legs stretched out, or bring your thighs against your body, your knees on the other side of the head. Maybe somebody might be able to get your knees almost all the way to the ground, in front of the shoulders. Make sure you can still breathe. Ready to come into bridge pose. Some of you might be able to come into bridge pose from here. Otherwise, you can lower down and then bring feet close to your seat and lift up into bridge. If you want to do it from this pose, you bring your hands onto your back to start. One foot comes forward and down towards the ground. The other foot stays behind the head. So that, and your hands are supporting your seat so that when you land your foot, it comes down very softly. And then you to push your hands into your seat, you can bring your other foot down. Now keep yourself in bridge pose for a moment. Tuck your chin in, your chest coming to the front of the chest, the front of the chest coming to your chin, 
and then slide your heels together. Keep your heels up. Now bring your arms down. Just walk forward on your shoulders and elbows as you can until your elbows are close to your ankle, your heels. Take hold of the ankles, sit on your heels, then push into your elbows, lift your head and your shoulders up off the mat. Tilt forward so your knees come down. Then you're sitting on the heels, top head to the ground. Couch pose. If this is too much for you, you do fish pose. So from here, if you were in bridge, if you were in bridge pose, just bring your hands underneath your seat, palms down, lower your, your seat down on the wrists, extend your legs. Then pull your shoulders underneath again, so your arms are underneath the body, lift your back up off the ground. Push your chest up, top of the head to the ground. Breathe very fast and nose like a sniffing dog. Break the pose. Those of you who are in couch pose can take your hands down beside your head, push into your hand and push into with your toes. Lift your head up off the mat, Urdhva Dhanurasana. If you want to go, those who, are, who did fish can now come into bridge pose and come into the Urdhva Dhanurasana as well, or stay in bridge pose. Your fingers come beside your head and you push into your hands, hold your breath so you get your Stay in pose a little bit, stretch the body, push your rock forward, back and forth if you like. Those who are more advanced can try to take the left leg up. And then the right foot, bring the left foot down first, of course. And take the right hand, uh, left hand onto your thigh. all optional. Just explore. You can even take your one leg up and the up, one hand up at the same time. A little bit easier if you take the same side. So if you lift your left leg, you lift your left hand and try to bring it to your thigh. Just be very flexible. You can eventually take the left hand to the right ankle. It takes a lot more balance, concentration. And of course, do your other side. Your right leg comes up, hold the breath. You have to have a good, strong Urdhva Dhanurasana by having your arms and legs almost straight. Push into your hand, left hand, and bring your right hand up to your thigh. Right leg to go the ankle. The thigh is a little bit more difficult. You have to turn your left foot out a little bit. And from here, lower back. Breathe in. Oh, breathe out, let go of all fatigue. Imagine you're fainting. Now slide your left foot in a little bit. Bring your right leg up, the knee to the shoulder, hold the ankle. And just push the knee against the shoulder, bring the foot closer to the head. If eventually you can straighten your left leg if you if you have the flexibility to do so. Those who are very flexible can see if you your leg all the way down, your foot all the way down to the ground, with your knees coming right on, uh, into your armpit, your leg is slipping to the right a little bit. You have Hanumanasana, chances are you're able to do this pose too, infinity pose, Anahatasana. And from here, we're going to turn onto your left side now. So turn to your left, and then bring yourself, walk yourself up on your left elbow, the right leg stays up. So you can hold the back of the knee, pull the foot up, more flexible, to circle your arm around from the outside, and hold the heel from above, and take your foot up. Those who are very flexible might be able to bring your left elbow back on the ground and pull the leg all the way as far as you can towards the ground over your head. This looks like a pose, a variation I showed at the beginning, a balance pose. So lots of 
look for the commonality and the poses. We are all the same. The sign of self-realization is when we see sameness everywhere. We look too often at the differences which cause separation. And a feeling of alienation or just um, not being common. We are not that. So now from here you roll back onto your back and then you change sides. So bring your left leg up. The knee bent first. You can take it to your shoulder to hold the ankle and push the leg towards your head a little bit more. Take your attention again to those areas that you feel tight. Those areas are very flexible. You might be able to tickle the foot and bring it right down beside your body, beside your head. Keep the right knee bent if you like, the left leg so it can be flat on the ground. And do what you can. And turn to your right. It was an Anahatas, Anah I had the name wrong. It's not Anahatasana, that's another pose. But it's infinity pose in any case. So again, you can stay on your right elbow Keep your right leg, try not to go forward a little bit. Hold the back of the knee, do it till you can. Even if you need to bend your knee. So just do what you can. Otherwise you can take your arm around the front, the, ins the back of the shoulder is pressing against the inside of the thigh. You take hold of the heel from above and from behind. And then you pull your foot down. The leg's a little bit behind the shoulder. So this is again in preparation to getting your leg behind your head. to something looks like bird of paradise from here. Your left arm can come behind, just underneath your knee, and behind, pressing the back, the back of the head against the lower back. And then break the pose. Roll back onto your back. Since your left leg is up, just take hold of your, just use your, um, take hold of the knee, and pull it over to the right. Left arm extends. Fully in the line of the shoulder. And just try to encourage me to come down the left hip, moving towards the right. Try to feel the spinal twist from the base of the spine all the way up to the back of the, the top of the back. hand and then pull it over towards the left. Make sure that the front of the left right shoulder doesn't come up. Keep the chest flat from the left shoulder all the way to the hand. So if your shoulder starts to pop up, keep extending your right arm. And come out of the twist a little if you need to. Hold your left right knee towards the front end of the mat. Try to feel the lengthening starting at the base of the hips all the way up the back body. Break the pose, lie in the back of Javatsana. Stay flat on the mat, relax for a few moments. Instantly, and just let the purifying effects take place now. Shavasana is when this happens, and you have to allow it to happen by surrendering all efforts, all tension. It's almost as though you fell from the building and just left. All the muscles completely disengaged. Now that the body 
is receptive and in a completely res um, relaxed. Imagine how the breath, the breath coming in. Allow it to flood in. all to the spiritual heart and the right side, the physical heart and the center of the chest. For that's where God resides and as God is equally present in all forms, it will go out to all beings through that divine thread that connects us together. Continue to cultivate compassion by meditating upon compassion, even if just for a minute every day. Say to yourself, Psalm 73 times, to really ingrain that intention in the heart and mind. My compassion is ever expanding and reaching all beings. We generate circumstances for ourselves, outcomes that are according to our karmas, or according to our actions, thoughts, and words. So the more compassionate, loving, and mindful and reverent our deeds are, that will bring about that outcome, positive outcome. So it's important to stay in observance of the ethical rules so as to keep all beings, yourself, and as a result, all beings through your interactions. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Instill the peace within and send it out to all beings. So much for joining next week the class will be on sunday morning probably i don't know so i teach somewhere else at 10 o'clock so either i'll do it earlier or i'll do it on sunday so namaste much love have a wonderful canada day